the sixth mansion chapter one the saint shows how when our lord begins to bestow greater favors there come greater troubles also some of these she mentions etc let us now speak by the assistance of the holy spirit concerning the six mansions wherein the soul remains wounded with the love of her spouse and aspires more after solitude removing as far as her state allows whatever may disturb this solitude this internal vision is so imprinted in the soul that all her desire is to enjoy it again i have already mentioned that nothing is seen in this prayer which can properly be called seeing neither is anything seen by the imagination i call it a sight on account of the comparison i made use of the soul is now resolved to choose no other spouse but the spouse pays no regard to her vehement desires of accomplishing the nuptials because he wishes her to long after them more earnestly and that such a favor which exceeds all goods should cost her something and though all be little for so great a gain yet i tell you daughters that the proof and security she has of possessing this gain is no more than necessary to enable her to bear this delay oh how many troubles both internal and external must be endured before we can enter the six mansions truly when sometimes i reflect upon it i fear that were these troubles known beforehand it would be exceedingly difficult for human infirmity to be able to bear them and to resolve to endure them however great might be the advantages which present themselves to her unless the soul should have arrived at the seventh mansions where she fears nothing but rather embraces sufferings and is resolved to endure them for the love of god the reason is because she is then almost always so united with his majesty that thence she derives all her courage i consider it good and proper to mention to you some of these troubles which i know for certain are endured perhaps all souls may not be led this way though i much doubt whether those souls which sometimes so truly enjoy heavenly things can live free from earthly trials of one kind or another although i do not intend to speak about them yet i considered afterwards that where i do speak on them it might give consolation to some soul in the like state to understand what takes place in those on whom god bestows such favors for then it really seems as if everything were lost i shall not proceed according to the order in which these troubles succeed but only as they present themselves to my memory i wish to begin with the least and this comes from the clamor which certain persons make with whom she lives and for some with whom she never spoke though during the course of her life they may have heard something of her for they exclaim that she pretends to be very holy that she goes to extremes and does extravagant things in order to deceive the world and make others appear worse who are better christians without these extravagancies but they do not remember that nothing is required except endeavoring to observe diligently the duties which one's state requires those whom she considered her friends withdraw themselves from her and are the very persons who afflict her the most and who seem to grieve that this soul is in their opinion ruined and manifestly deluded they are confident that these things come from the devil that she will meet with the same end which such and such a one met with who was ruined that through her fault virtue will decay and that she deceives her confessors they accordingly go to them and advise them to be on their guard placing before them the examples of some who by this very means have been ruined a thousand other such scoffs and expressions of this kind they make use of i know one who was in great fear lest she should find no one to hear her confession because so many spoke against her and as they said a great many things i need not detain you by relating them here but what is worse these trials do not end soon but last one's whole life for one warns another to take care and have nothing to do with such kind of persons you may say surely there are some who will speak well of her oh my daughters how few are there who believe her actions to be good in comparison with the many who abominate them besides this praise is a much greater trouble to her than the troubles i have just mentioned because the soul clearly sees that if there be any good in her it is god's gift and not her own in any way for she has a little before discovered how exceeding poor she is and how buried in sins hence such praise gives her intolerable pain at least in the beginning though it afterwards abates for these reasons 
First, because experience clearly discovers to her that men speak well of a person as hastily as they speak ill, and therefore she regards the one no more than the other. Secondly, because our Lord has given her greater light in discovering that nothing good belongs to her, but is the gift of His Majesty, and thus, forgetting that she has any share therein, and beholding the good as it were in a third person, she excites herself to praise God. Thirdly, because if she has observed that some souls have been benefited by beholding the favors God bestows on her, she thinks His Majesty makes use of this means of having her esteemed virtuous, who is not so in reality, that souls may receive benefit thereby. Fourthly, having before her God's honor and glory more than her own, the temptation which comes in the beginning is removed, viz. that such praise will ruin her, as has happened to some, and hence, she pays little regard to her being esteemed, provided that by her means God may be praised once at least, no matter what may come afterwards. These and other reasons lessen the great trouble which these praises cause, though some is nearly always experienced, except when the trouble is very slight and it is not much observed. But it is a greater trouble without comparison, to see oneself publicly esteemed good without reason, than to suffer the troubles I have mentioned. For when the soul has arrived so far as not to be much affected by these things, she is much less influenced by those troubles. Nay, she rejoices at them, and they are to her as most delightful music. This is indeed the very truth, and the soul is hereby rather encouraged than dejected, since experience has now taught her the great benefit which she gains by this way. She thinks her persecutors do not offend God, but that His Majesty permits these trials for her great gain, and as she sees this clearly, she conceives for them a very particular and tender affection, considering them as her best friends, and as affording her much more gain than those who speak well of her. Our Lord is also accustomed to send her grievous sicknesses. This is a much more severe trial, especially when the pains are acute. For if they be violent, they seem to me to be the most severe afflictions that can be endured on earth. I speak of exterior trials, however numerous they may be. If they are such as I am speaking of, they disorder both the interior and exterior in such a manner, that the soul knows not what to do with herself in her anguish. She would more willingly endure any martyrdom, provided it were short, than suffer these pains. Still, they do not last long in such intensity, for God at last does not give more than may be endured. His Majesty first bestows patience. But with regard to other great pains and infirmities of various sorts, I knew one who from the time that our Lord began to bestow the favor above mentioned, now forty years ago, cannot be said to have had one day without pain and other kinds of suffering, I mean, want of health besides other great troubles. It is true that she has been so very wicked. She esteemed them all but little, in comparison with hell, which she deserved. Others, who have not offended God so much, may be conducted by another way. But I would always choose the road of suffering, because I wish to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ, even if there were no other advantage. But there are always many advantages. But if I could speak of the interior afflictions and make them understood, Oh, how trifling would these others appear! But it is impossible to describe the way they are felt. Let us begin with the affliction which arises from meeting with a confessor who is so cautious, and has such little experience, that he thinks nothing is secure, who fears everything, suspects everything, as if he saw something extraordinary. This is especially the case, if he should discover any imperfection in the soul which has these favors, for he thinks they ought to be angels on whom God bestows these favors, which is impossible while they live in the body. Then he immediately ascribes everything either to the devil or to melancholy. The world is indeed so full of this last, that I do not wonder the devil does so much harm by this way. And confessors have great reason to fear and be very cautious. But the poor soul which is possessed with the same fear, and goes to her confessor as to her judge, who, notwithstanding, condemns her, cannot help feeling great trouble and uneasiness. Only he who has experienced it can tell what a grievous affliction it is. Another trouble which such souls have to endure, especially if they have been wicked, is the thought that God allows them thus to be deceived on account of their sins, 
and though when his majesty bestows upon them those favors they feel secure and cannot but believe it is no other spirit but that of god yet these favors soon pass away but the remembrance of their sins still continues and beholding defects in themselves for some are never wanting this torment immediately returns again when a confessor comforts a soul she becomes a little calm though she falls again into trouble but when he increases her fear her trouble becomes almost insupportable especially when some aridities follow then it seems she never remembered god nor will she remember him and when she hears his majesty spoken of he seems to be one whom she had heard spoken of a long time ago but all this is nothing for in addition she may further imagine that she is not able to inform her confessors and that she deceives them and though she may observe things carefully and be certain there is not even a first motion undiscovered and though she may be often told not to trouble herself still all is of no avail because the understanding is so obscured that it is not capable of discovering the truth but only of believing what the imagination represents to her and this is then the mistress and giving way to the impertinences which the devil is pleased to represent to her and to him our lord often gives leave to try her and to make her imagine that she is abandoned by god for there are many things by which she is attacked there is also an inward anguish so painful and intolerable that i know not to what it can be compared except to the torments of hell because in this tempest no comfort finds admittance if she seek for it from her confessor the devils seem to have combined with him in order to make him torment her the more a confessor was once speaking with a person who had been in this torment and finding it was a dangerous conflict because so many things were united together she told her to inform him when she was in the same conflict again but she was always so much worse and he afterwards understood that she could not help it nor had she any power over herself if she wished to read a book in her own language she could no more understand it than if she were unable to read a letter for her understanding was then incapable in a word there is no other remedy in this tempest but to hope in god's mercy which by one word of his or by some circumstance which seems casual dispels everything so suddenly that such a soul appears as if she had never been overcast for she is now filled with light and with much greater consolation like one who has escaped from a dangerous contest with victory she continues to praise and give thanks to our lord for it was he who fought and conquered for her she knows very clearly that she is able to do nothing and it seems that all the arms with which she might defend herself are in the hands of her enemy she likewise sees plainly her own misery and how little we can do if our lord should forsake us she seems to have no need of consideration in order to understand this truth because the experience she already has therein having seen herself wholly unfit now makes her know her own nothingness because though she be in a state of grace since notwithstanding the storm she does not nor would not for any earthly thing offend god yet it is so hidden that she thinks she neither has nor ever had the least spark of the love of god because if she should have done any good or his majesty have bestowed any favor upon her all seems to her to have been a dream or imagination oh jesus what a sight it is to behold a soul forsaken in this manner and how little as i have said does any earthly consolation avail her do not think then sisters if sometimes you find yourselves in this state that the rich and those who enjoy their liberty more have a surer remedy against these times no no it seems to me to be like placing all the delights of the world before persons condemned to die which would afford them no pleasure but rather increase their torment and so it is the same here consolation must come from above for here earthly comforts are of no avail this great god desires we should know our own misery and acknowledge him for our king this is very necessary for what i shall mention afterwards but what shall this poor soul do if she continue thus for many days if she pray vocally it is as if she did not pray i mean as to her receiving any consolation for her interior does not admit of any she does not even understand what she prays for nor does she understand herself though she may pray vocally as for mental prayer this is no time for it because the powers are not prepared for it 
Even solitude does her great harm, and this proves another torment to her, for she cannot endure to be in the company with any one, nor that any one should speak to her. However much she may strive against this, she still has a certain nausea in her exterior, which can be observed. It is impossible for him who endures this to be able to express it, because they are spiritual trials and pangs, for which no name can be found. The best remedy, that is, not for removing, for I know none such, but for enabling one to bear it, is attending to works of charity and exterior employments, and hoping in God's mercy, which is never wanting to those who trust in Him. May He be blessed for ever. Amen.